Hey friends, we continue through the New Testament together. We are in 1 Peter now, and we're in chapter 3. And I just love seeing the maturity of Peter as a seasoned leader now that he's been uh, through the process of being discipled by Jesus himself, taken on the leadership role of the church in its early days, passed really the baton on to Paul as part of what's happened in the New Testament age. And now he writes these letters and you see the wisdom that he's learned over the years. Chapter three is about relationships. And he starts uh, in the writings as we read them, he starts with wives, submit your husbands, husbands, love your wives. Similar to what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter five, very similar consistent language. But Peter comes from a voice of experience. Don't forget, Peter was married when Jesus met him. He already was dealing with the challenges of being married and the things, the blessings of it, as well as the difficulties of it. And then he takes on this three-year assignment plus a lifestyle change in ministry for the rest of his life while he's married. You can appreciate some of the changes and radical impact that would have had on Peter and his wife. And they embraced it. They may not have always liked it, but they embraced it. And he took on his leadership role and his mantra, not because that's what he was dreaming of, but because that's what God through Jesus called him to. So then he's, he's writing from that place of, and spirit, and he's calling on men and women to humble themselves together to serve the Lord. And I love that. You can go back and reread that section, the first seven verses of 1 Peter 3. But 1 Peter 3, 8 is for all of us. He says to all of us, likewise, whether you're married or not, whether you have relationships at home like that or not, whether you're called into ministry or not, it doesn't really matter. We're all called to do this. Verse, verse 8, be like-minded, be united together. Look to build unity with each other instead of trying to find differences or divisiveness within each other. And then he says, be sympathetic. Realize that you're not in their shoes and, and you need to recognize that just like Peter had to learn that everybody has a calling and everybody has a gifting and we all have this responsibility to be sympathetic and edify or build each other up. Then he says, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Uh, those are great words for all of us to remember that it's kindness that does way more and demonstrates way more of what we are as Christians than our correctedness. <laughs> Some of you, maybe you know somebody like this, has the spiritual gift of correcting. <laughs> you just instantly see what everybody does wrong. You're instantly in criticism mode. You, you, Come on now, let's just face it. If we are like this, we need to own it. We, we tend to be always looking to get everyone else to improve. Parents, you know what I'm talking about because you've done that with your kids. Or ask them, they'll tell you if you have. They understand that you love them enough to correct them. That's part of your duty. But also it can carry over into our faith walk and we start to correct people that we have no authority over or responsibility for. It's okay to be correct. For sure, we're supposed to live a righteous life. But it's not the best way to bring people to know Jesus. They will know us by our love for one another, our sympathy, our edification, our encouragement, our kindness, our humbleness, not necessarily our correcting. So today, as you read that verse, maybe that's your soap verse for the day, consider the relationships around your life, whether it's at home or at work or in school, wherever you're at, and ask yourself the question, am I a person that people perceive as kind, as sympathetic, as always making the effort to love one another, as humble, as compassionate. And then pick one of those and do something to practice that attribute today. Who knows, you might just discover yourself maturing and growing just like Peter did and becoming this incredible leader for the kingdom of God. God bless you as you do. We'll see you again next time. Have a great day.